Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and today I'm doing something slightly different. I'm going to talk about the format of the save files and how you can edit it for fun and profit. And moreover, how uh, you can understand what I'm talking about when I say things like semi-major axis and eccentricity and longitude of the ascending node. So anyway, yes, we have this spacecraft sitting on the launch pad. We hit F5 to save the file. Now we can go into our game directory and look under the saves, under the save name, and you'll find the quick save file. So the quick save file is in a kind of, um, well, it's in this, I don't know, bracket delimited format. But down the bottom will be the most recent spacecraft I've added. And let's find it. Yes, we're looking for this section called Vessel. Now, this is the main part we're interested in. After this, it's all parts and things like that that you can you know, mess around with. You don't. You can edit fuel levels, but that would be cheating. <laughs> I'm doing this for educational purposes. So, we have the probe and its situation is pre-launch, right? Sit equals pre-launch. So, we, to get this into space, we're going to set it to orbiting. Set landed to false, and the case is important on this, and remove the landed at. Now, that would put us in orbit, but it will put us into this orbit, and this orbit has a semi-major axis of 300 kilometers and an eccentricity of 0.994. That is the equivalent of uh, having the ground pulled away from underneath you and falling towards the planet's core if the planet weren't there. So we want to adjust that. Let's put ourselves into a 100 kilometer orbit above the surface of Kerbin. So 100 kilometers above the surface of Kerbin is 700 kilometers from the core of Kerbin because Kerbin has a 600 kilometer radius. So semi-major axis is in meters, so you'll do 700,000. Now you want this to be a circular orbit, so you set your eccentricity to zero. And just for good measure, let's zero out the inclination, longitude of perihelion, and the longitude of the ascending node. And we'll keep everything else that way. You hit Control S to save and hold F9. You will find yourself, in momentarily, in orbit above the planet. Ah, there we go there. How pretty is that? Well, it says 9999999. Game isn't quite exact. As soon as you load this and view it, the parameters will change because it will convert it to the local Unity coordinate system and then for saving it will convert it back to the orbital coordinate system and because of the errors in floating point rounding you will lose precision and the numbers will never stay the same for long. So don't worry if you go back to your save file and edit it. So yeah, let's come out to the map mode and you can see this. Now I've put up these four, these three other satellites into a nicely spaced orbit so you can get the idea of the coordinates. Right, we have two, one and two and the place where these intersect represents the kind of true axis of the, the universe. The Specifically, if I time accelerate, you can see that's going up and over. So that means that this is the ascending node. That means that that is the zero point of our coordinate system. There is a plane, an invisible plane, which represents one of the axes. And this is the kind of master axis here. So just so you know what that represents. So by zeroing out all the angles, these two orbits are coplanar. You see this smaller one is coplanar with this outside one. Um, but this one is gonna be moving a lot faster because of course it's in a lower orbit. Now if I go back to the save file and edit the semi-major axis to be 1,000 or 1 millimeters or 1,000 kilometers and save it, we should be in the same altitude orbit. But we won't be at the same place, hopefully, otherwise we'll smash into it. That would be rather unfortunate, unless that's perhaps what you're wanting to do. So there you go, you see that we started at exactly that node there. Actually, we started, well, that's a whole complicated mess of things to talk about. <laughs> Yeah, the, you see, uh, we are now in the same orbit as this thing, and uh, if we time accelerate, we will fly around and miss everything, but we won't ever catch up on this because we're in the same orbit. Now, the other parameter that uh, I've mentioned is eccentricity. I adjusted that to zero, but if I change this up oh, to, say, 0 0.3, right, what happens? We reload this. This turns our orbit from being a perfect circle into an ellipse, right? So we come out, we see now that with, if we hit tab, 
you can see Kerbin in the middle. This is our orbit. We're going. We're currently 700 kilometers above the surface, or if we add in 600, that makes us uh, 1,300 kilometers from the center. At the other end, we are uh, 100 kilometers above the surface, or 600 above the center, right? So if you add uh, 600 or 700 to 1,300, you get 2,000. And if you divide that by two, you would get 1,000. And that's what the same major axis is. This is the major axis. This is the longest axis of this ellipse. So there's another axis that kind of goes across here, and that's smaller. And it gets more extreme as you, go for, as you get to higher eccentricities. But the major axis is the long axis of the ellipse, and half of that length is the semi-major axis. And that is what defines the period of the orbit. So if I time accelerate, these things will unfortunately, well, go to slow time acceleration. But this one and this one will take the same amount of time to go around. In fact, all of these things will take the same amount of time to go around because their semi-major axis is 1,000 kilometers. So even although this, uh, this one we've got varies in distance, its period is the same as the others, which are in circular orbits. Uh, and that's a very important thing to realize. The, the period goes as uh, the semi-major axis to the power 3 over 2, and that can be important later on when you're trying to figure out rendezvous. So, yeah, let's come back and actually demonstrate the ellipse getting even larger. Let's make our semi-major axis 2,000 and our eccentricity 0.6. Uh, actually, let's make this 5,000. Or uh, let's make it 10,000. Okay, 10,000. I'll make our eccentricity 0.9. And we'll see what happens here. We'll see the extreme ellipse getting defined even more. There we go. Now, with such an extreme orbit, we're actually crossing the lunar orbit. And we're coming down to, well, we're coming down to exact same altitude. But you can see there, more obviously, that there is an ellipse and there is a major axis, which is the long one, and there's a minor axis, which is a short one. We're not interested in the minor axis. We're only interested in the major axis. Okay, so that's the two of the parameters defined. Um, eccentricity, you don't set it to above one unless you really would know what you're doing. Setting above one makes it a hyperbolic escape orbit, and it's very easy to mess that up and make your game unplayable, so don't do that right now. That's for advanced users only. So let's get ourselves back into the 1,000 kilometer orbit and set our eccentricity to say 0.1, right? Now, what is ink? Ink is inclination, obviously. So if I set that to 45 degrees, we should see ourselves in an inclined orbit with respect to the planet. And I load this up again. Maybe I should edit these loading sections out, or maybe not. So there you go. Um, that is, that is us on our descending node. This is the ascending node. We're going to start at the descending node because, well, because of what our, our mean anomaly is set to. But you'll see that our orbit, the ascending node, is starting at the peri perikey. So yeah, 45 degrees to the rest of the world. It's easy enough. We can make this bigger. This value goes, uh, is measured in degrees and goes from 0 to 180. So 90 degrees puts us in a polar orbit. Again, because of what we because we start at um, Apple Apps, we're going to start, um, this is going to be our ascending node here. And if I come back, we can make this even higher. Now, as it goes past 100 past 90 it becomes a retrograde orbit so if I set it to 170 or yeah set it to 170 we will now be in an orbit going the wrong way around the planet but slightly inclined there we go now if I bring this up and start the orbit you see that we're going one way and they're going the other way and that's because our eccentricity or sorry our inclination is over 90 degrees so that's a useful thing to know Okay, so what are the, what's these other two parameters that we've got here? These are angular values. These are the longitude of perihelion and the longitude of the ascending node. So longitude of the ascending node is the easiest, easier one to do. We'll send ourselves back to a 45 degree inclination 
and will set our longitude of our ascending node to 10 degrees. Now, this longitude of the ascending node measures the angle of your ascending node from the reference point. And the reference point, if you remember, is going to be here, right? This is the inclination, the place where two goes up over one's orbit. And this is just like an arbitrary reference point that's defined by the coordinate system. So you can see as we come around, we'll bring it around. This is our ascending node. So the longitude of our ascending node is roughly 10 degrees around the orbit. If we, if we had uh, a point in the middle of the planet, we could measure the angle from here to here, right? Here to here to here, that would be 10 degrees. Easy enough. So as we increase, the whole orbit will precess around the planet. Let's make this um, 120 degrees and we should come out over here, right? F9. Be nice if we could have the reload screen reload in this location. There we go. So you see, oh, that's actually not the one. We're looking for the ascending node, which is at perihelion here. So in this case, it's going to be, in this case, if you measure from here to here, that would be uh, 120 degrees. So that's how you adjust that. Now, the longitude of the perihelion adjust or not perihelion it's i say perihelion longitude of periapse right because this is in general lpe this measures the angle between the ascending node and the uh perihelion peri periapse so let's make it 30 degrees and again this goes from zero to 360. so reload this and come around here this is our ascending node here and now if we measure around, that would be 30 degrees to go up to there. So this becomes, uh, well, this is kind of important when you're doing really eccentric orbits. Again, if we come back to our 10,000 and eccentricity 0.9, it, uh, you'll see it much more pronounced. Because, of course, the, it also adjusts the position of your ap 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 apple apps. There you go here, you see? This is the now 30 degrees below the, uh, the, the ecliptic, before below the plane. Let's do it 90 degrees. We should have our perihelion over the North Pole. Not perihelion, our periaps! Perikey, whatever. Perihelion refers specifically to the sun. And there we go. Um, oh, I probably changed the wrong one. No, I changed the inclination to 90 degrees. Yeah, uh, longitude of perihelion should be 90 degrees. Ah, uh, control S is next to control A. I'm going to not mess that up. Here we go. So we should have perihelion occurring exactly over the North Pole. Right, here we go. You see that? Look, it's over. Right. You see, with perihelion, or periapse occurs at the North Pole. And equivalently... If we come back to this, if we set the longitude of perihelion or periapse to uh, 180 degrees away from this, 270, right? That means that it will be at the South Pole. And again, F9, as if by magic, the game reloads, takes a second, and there we go. We're in a highly eccentric polar orbit with our cell uh, reaching the periapse over the Southern Pole. Okay, so what else is uh, important here? Well, mean anomaly is measured in radians for some bizarre reason. But that measures how far around the orbit you are. Uh, there are two pi radians in an orbit, so if we start at zero, that should put us at periapse. If I reload this, you'll see that we're down at periapse. Da da da. And you see, yep, we're down at periapse. And of course, 3.14, because that is pi, that puts us at apoapse. 3.14159265359. Nah, I don't know. Someone's going to YouTube me, going to comment on YouTube that that's the wrong number for pi. And I'll just say that that was from memory. There we go. Yeah, that's, that's accurate enough for me anyway. Out at apoapse, long way above the plane. That's very cool, huh? 
So what else can we do here? Well, uh, you can adjust the time at which the launch plays. That's the epoch, and that will that's kind of useful if you want to adjust uh, the position on on larger orbits. Um, reference reference tells you which body you're orbiting. So if I do ref equals two and I bring it back down to say uh, one thousand kilometer orbit. And we'll set our eccentricity back to something reasonable. Then we load it. What do you think one is? Or not one. Two is the moon. That's us orbiting the moon. So you can put your thing in orbit around any arbitrary planet you like using this uh, modification if you want. Of course, it's entirely possible that when you set yourself up orbiting a very large planet, the, the orbit you start with actually ends up inside the planet and you explode. Uh, the reverse is also true, that you could set up an orbit around Gilly and find out that you're immediately outside its sphere of influence. So you need to adjust these things really beforehand. Now, if you don't fancy doing this the low-tech way with um, save file editors, you can go in and get a mod called HyperEdit. This uh, will let you adjust the stuff inside a window using the uh, a device you attach to your ship. You can also adjust the orbits of planets with that, so all sorts of crazy stuff can happen there. It's a lot of fun, but uh, I'm obviously mainly focusing on the save files here just because everyone can do that. And uh, you can also, from the save file, adjust the positions of objects on the surface of planets. I'm not going to cover that here. Um, and uh, yeah, ex highly eccentric orbits above one, they behave slightly differently. And if you mess that up, you can ruin your game state and require a reload. So don't mess around with those unless you really know what you're doing. Anyway, I uh, hope you've enjoyed this. Hope you found it useful. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe. Actually, uh, we can't have a Kerbal Space Program video without an explosion. So one of the nice things about save file editing is you can copy the orbital parameters of one object and paste them onto another. Now, if you do that and uh, then become one of those objects, it will just spontaneously explode because they're inside each other. But if you copy the parameters and then change the inclination by about 10 degrees, that will set things up for a collision course, such as I've done with the, the Goon Station here. Now, uh, about 10 degree inclination at a 100 kilometer orbit, that corresponds to an encounter velocity of about 100 meters per second. So uh, that will pretty much smash any station you can imagine into millions of pieces. Now, a word of warning here is that if you're going to do this, you should set the focus of the of your camera to a different spacecraft because if you have it the focus as the sp one of the parts of the collision, then uh, the floating point errors will mean that they might in fact miss. So it's better to focus on something else until just before the collision. Then you switch back and uh, you know set your physics simulation to the fastest it can, set your video capture to the best thing possible, and then uh, sit back in and watch the terror in great detail. And so here we are about to collide with this. Twelve people work to build this and one person sets his computer hard at work trying to compute what happens to destroying this. There we go. <laughs> oh boy. So there we have it. Goon Station 1 demolished by a simple save file edit.